Hello everyone, my name is Michelle Angelo Rocha and I'm a PhD student in Educational Leadership and Policy Studies at the University of South Florida. Today I am, I'm here with a very special guest. She is the Dr. Elaine Ken. Um, Dr. Elaine Ken, she is a co-author of the chapter Critical Analytic Memoir, part of the book Analyzing and Interpreting Qualitative Research after the interview that is in production right now with SAGE. Dr. Ken is Senior Lecturer and Director of Doctoral Studies in the School of Education at the National University of Ireland, Galway. Her research and publication center on, on widening participation in higher education, including in teacher education, with a particular focus on social class, ethnicity, and intercultural education. Her research interests also include research methodology, especially constructivist grounded theory. You can read a little bit more about her, uh, her work in the be description below of this video. So how are you, Dr. Elaine Kin? I'm very well. Thank you, Michelle. How are you doing? Good, thank you. So could you tell us a little bit about your chapter? Sure. Well, first of all, greetings from the west of Ireland. Um, it looks brighter there than it is here, but of course, we're in different time zones. But sure, um, a little bit of information about the chapter. So as Michelle said there, it's about analytic memoing, um, but it's, a, it's, a, it's actually about critical analytic memoing. So it, it's about analytic memoing but with a critical turn. And I'll, I'll come back to that point shortly, actually. So I suppose in the chapter, I focus on analytic memoing as a core tool, what I call in the chapter a core generative tool for all qualitative researchers. And by generative, I mean that it helps us as researchers to move along, to generate or produce our analyses. Now, I work from a constructivist grounded theory perspective. And in the, cha in the chapter, I show how it's conducted within one particular constructivist grounded theory study. But I must emphasize these tools can absolutely be used by qualitative researchers more generally. So in this sense, the chapter is very much for all qualitative researchers. And actually, it builds very nicely on uh, Dr. Paul Maya's chapter, which is the chapter in the book that precedes mine. His chapter is about memo writing strategies. And in his work, he explores the purpose and use of a range of different memos. So I think my chapter builds very nicely and naturally on his work. Oh, thank you so much. And how do you think the, your chapter can contribute to qualitative research? Yeah, I think that's a really interesting question, Michelle. So I suppose I, I feel the chapter contributes to qualitative research in a number of ways. I suppose, firstly, from a constructivist grounded theory perspective, it provides clear examples of memos at different stages of the grounded theory research process. And it traces the development and the evolution of a complex conceptual analysis. So I think that's always great to see in practice. It also demonstrates the connection between memoing and other tools that we all use as qualitative researchers, such as, for example, diagramming. And the third thing that it does as a contribution is that it introduces the idea of using memos as a vehicle for examining our positionality as a researcher. And that's where I'm returning to that critical edge, using memos to examine our sociodemographic positionality and why that's important, what that looks like and what's the impact on our data. And of course, these points are from within a grounded theory framework, but they do also constitute, I think, a contribution to qualitative research more broadly, because I suppose from a more general perspective, my chapter demonstrates how grounded theory memoing tools can actually be used much more widely in qualitative research to bring a sharp and incisive analytic edge to your analysis, which of course is always a plus. No matter what methodology we're using from a qualitative perspective, having that um, sharp, incisive analytic edge is, is always a plus. Thank you. And what people will learn from your chapter? What they, uh, the, the, uh, what they expect to learn when they want to read your chapter? Right, well, I think there's probably a range of things that I hope um, a reader would learn depending on what they're, they're bringing to the chapter themselves. Um, I suppose they'll learn about different types of memos at the start and that again builds on Paul's work in the preceding chapter in the area. But also, I think what will be useful for readers here is that it, the, the chapter provides step by step instructions and importantly, examples about how 
and when to use memos to really expedite your analysis and to give your findings that critical analytic edge that I've emphasized a few times. Uh, so readers will find examples in context, which I think is important as well, because I do it from within the, the, the context of a particular study that I completed myself to actually show how this works in practice, to show how analytic memos develop over time and how they help produce or generate our analyses rather than just recording them. And I think that's an important point. And I think it's exciting for qualitative researchers to realize that when we start memoing, it's not just to record our thoughts, which are very important about our codes and categories, but actually that process of thinking about them and writing about them actually helps us produce our analyses. And I think that's really, really useful. In fact, quite exciting. Uh, certainly I have found it so. Um, further learning from the chapter, I think, would be that I show how we can use memos to move from more descriptive summaries of codes and categories to more abstract conceptualizing. And I think that's very important. I think all qualitative researchers are, you know, used to and perhaps not happy with, you know, the criticisms of some qualitative research being overly descriptive and what's the contribution to knowledge. Well, I think, you know, part of the learning from this chapter, hopefully, will be to assist qualitative researchers in how to make their analyses more conceptual, more abstract. Um, and again, as I said, you don't have to be doing grounded theory uh, to do this or for these procedures and processes to be relevant. They are, and I show how they're relevant for all qualitative researchers. Thank you. And I have um, one more question. Uh, do you want to share the last, uh, that's the last question. Do you want to share a little bit about based on your experience, uh, like advice for students right now, but some time for, uh, for more advanced uh, qualitative researchers? Do you want to just to close it, uh, the interview? Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? Just, just a, a message for based on your experience and do you want to send a message for the get for the students or also for the more advanced uh, scholars uh, about basing your experience in your field? Um, let me see. Well, I think um, I would go back to one of Glazer, Barney Glazer, the, one of the, the famous originators of grounded theory. If we're talking about memoing, I'll go back to one of his original statements about memoing. Uh, which is to, you know, stop and memo. Whenever you have an idea, stop and memo and be free in your writing. Allow yourself to, I suppose, come alive and to really describe and to think about and to play with your ideas in your memos. You know, your initial drafts of writing with respect to memos are really for your eyes only and they're to help you develop. So don't be afraid of the blank page. Jump in there, play with the ideas. And as over time, you will get confidence in your writing, it will develop very, very nicely. And that's when then the tools that Paul's chapter and my chapter, I think, share with you will help you then really develop your writing and your analysis in, in those respects. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, I really appreciate, uh, thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. And I can't wait to read your chapter. Oh, that's great. Well, it was a really exciting, a project to work on. I was delighted to contribute. It's a wonderful book. It's really engaging. Um, it's live with real world research examples, which is so important for us as a research community. I'll certainly be ensuring that all of my research students read it. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks so much. Thanks, Michelle. Bye bye. Bye bye.